Hi everyone, Mike here from Watch It Paint It, and in this video I'm going to show you some tips for painting Tau using the new Commander Farsight. This was kindly sent to the channel by Games Workshop, so thank you very much for that. The first thing I'm going to do is prime this miniature in grey, and then do a light Xenothal from above with a lighter grey. By applying this highlight right now, I don't need to worry about doing it after I've put on the second color, and that's going to make sense more in a minute. So tip number one is making stripes with masking tape. My freehand sucks and I've come to love masking tape. Here I have 3mm thick automotive fine line masking tape. Vallejo also makes very thin masking tape for models and this one is 2mm thick. Most of this miniature is going to be red, so I'm taping off all the areas that I want to stay a light grey. Since I've already done a Xenothal Prime with a grey beforehand, that means all I need to do after the tape comes off is a simple edge highlight. Here I've got everything taped off, and now I'm going to use an airbrush, but you don't have to. If you choose not to use an airbrush, then I'd recommend sponging on the paint, and then doing some touch-ups with a normal brush. So just like before, I'm going to do a type of Xenothal Prime, starting with a dark red all over the model. Then I'm going to come in afterwards with a brighter red at a 45 degree angle from above. Once all the red is on, we can remove the masking tape and see the nice straight grey lines underneath. The next tip is for edge highlighting. The Tau have so many edges that need highlighting and very few curved surfaces. A fast and easy way to do this is to dry brush on the edge highlights. This takes a little practice, but doing your edge highlights in this way makes them much neater than using the side of a brush. I'm not saying that you can't get neat edge highlights using the side of a brush, but it does take a lot more practice than this method. I personally prefer more subtle edge highlighting than Games Workshop box art, so for my edge highlights I'll be using a reddish orange, and this one is Wild Rider Red. The trick is to get a flat brush and then drag it lightly perpendicular to the edges. It's also very important that you have almost no paint on your brush. It does take a little bit of time, but it is much easier in my opinion than using the side of a normal brush, though you will probably have to do two layers of paint this way. Once I'm done with the red, I'm then going to switch to an off-white and edge highlight the grey areas in the same way. Some spots are very small, such as the stripes on the fins, and for these I'm just turning my flat brush sideways to hit those areas. The third and final tip is panel lining. If you're not familiar with this, it's the process of putting dark paint or ink into the grooves between armor panels. I find it much easier to do this if you first use a gloss varnish on the entire model. And just so you know, you don't even have to use a gloss varnish for this part. Most of the time, I'll just take a glossy wash and put that over the grooves in the armor panels, and then I'll touch up any mistakes afterwards with the original paint. As you can see, the Tau Battlesuits have lots of grooves between their armor panels. I'm going to be using Liquitex Black Ink as my panel liner color. To help this process, I'm also going to use a damp brush and wipe over the panel line. That way when I touch my brush loaded with ink onto the panel line, the ink gets sucked into it. The method I'm showing is only one of many ways of doing this, and I'll warn you, this can be frustrating if you accidentally touch a part of the model other than the groove between the armor plates. The ink is intense enough that it can stain the varnish, though the upside of the gloss varnish is that it's going to create a smooth surface so that the ink quickly settles into the grooves. Now black isn't the only color you can use for panel lining. For the grooves and the symbols on the Tau armor, I'm actually using a white ink. That way I can use a bright neon color afterwards and make those grooves really pop. That's it for this video. Let me know if there's any other tips you think are important for new Tau painters to know in the comments below. These are just the first three that came to my mind. Also a big thank you to all of our patrons on Patreon. Your continued support has really helped the channel grow. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.